this is not a urinal. I feel the need to say that because it sure as hell looks like one. And even in the eBay listings, when I bought this about a year ago, it also had that sort of look to it. Here's what it looks inside. And certainly if you put it in a public restroom, people may urinate in it if it was put at the right height. I'm not going to test that. Let me plug it in and you can see if you can work out what it is. I'll plug it into this, the anti-tester. And uh, for its 4 watt rating, it's a very ungenerous uh, 2 watts. One point, oh, like you can't even see that. Hold on, I'll move this in. Uh, 1.9 watt uh, current, 33 milliamps, power factor, a miserable 0.24. Um, interesting. It does claim that it is 4 watts, 2, 2 watt ultraviolet tubes. I'm not so convinced about that. Let me just uh, unplug this device and get it out of the way, and then we'll pop the lid off this and take a look inside. This, incidentally, is a glue trap. It's designed to attract insects, and you mount it up high so the light is shielded from your vision just for convenience. And it takes these sticky mats. I say it takes these sticky mats. I don't even know if you can get spares for it. But the idea is you peel this coating off and it's got a sticky layer the insects get attracted to the light and then when they get bored their little wings want to rest they land on the mat and then they stick to it out of sight and then perish horribly as happens with these type of things the back of it is very stylish actually look at that all these sort of slots and grills they've missed a trick though this is the cable entrance here it would have there is another option here but it would have been nice if you could actually dress the cable across and bring it out the other side anyway i'm going to take the screws out of this so the sticky mats are an alternative option for the high voltage insect zappers and they are favored these days because they don't make those loud electrical zapping noises and uh, huge quantities of smoke see this is why i've not made this video about this before it's huge it is a monstrous thing but the sticky traps they instead, because they just basically trap the fly and hold it in place, they don't blow the bits of the fly all over your food, apparently. So that's why uh, they've sort of come into favour. It's also quite disturbing when you're in a quiet area and one of the zappers gets a big insect and then it's just basically zapping and smouldering for ages. I don't know which is the most humane, probably the sticky trap, not really sure. Do people treat insects in a humane manner? This, this does not reach down there. That's disappointing. Uh, let me see if I can find an alternative screwdriver that might reach down there. There's one. It's a universal diamond-tipped screwdriver, courtesy of Phil. Who said this is a gift? Thank you, Phil. Is this going to come apart now? Oh, it is going to come apart. Uh, righty off. We are in. With screws scattering everywhere. So let's see what we can find out. Oh, there is a little circuit board here. Let's see if we can brighten this up a little bit. A little circuit board down here, which will pop out. It's very basic looking. Uh, then it's got the two cables going out to the... Oh, look, that even unplugs. That's quite nice, isn't it? Seems quite well made. Um, then those wires go out to the tubes. How do the tubes come out? Tell you what, I shall, uh, I shall just take everything apart. I'll take the pictures as I usually do, and then we can scrutinise this. I'll tell you what, this looks as though it unclips. That's quite good. Oh, that's better, isn't it? That's a, a much better result. Um, anything happening with these? Do these unclip from the back? Well, they are kind of clipped in. Hold on, I shall just unclip them. No, oh, that doesn't feel right. No, that just feels like squishy plastic, to be honest. Which may be how these actually go in. Maybe these just slide in. Or maybe I just crunch it up and break it. Oh, there we go. So there's the LED strips, which are just slid in. Okay, right, I shall reverse engineer this, and we'll take a look at the circuit. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore and it is a simple capacitive dropper. Let's zoom down this to get a closer look at this capacitive dropper goodness. So the power comes in on this connector here and there is a fuse. Then there's a uh, current limited capacitor and by current limited capacitor I mean that in each half cycle 
uh, it allows a portion of current to flow backwards and forwards. That gets rectified by this bridge rectifier uh, used to charge this capacitor here up and uh, then drive the LEDs. There are some resistors. There's mainly discharge resistors, as I'll show you in the schematic. And then there's a couple of series resi resistors with the LED strips like these. Let me grab the schematic and show you what's what. I shall zoom down just a little bit more. This is where I usually over zoom badly. Here's the incoming supply. There's the printed circuit board fuse, which is just a thin track. There's the standard X2 suppression capacitor, 470 nanofarad. And rather pleasingly, because this is good, because sometimes you just put a single resistor across it, they've got two 220k resistors in series. And that means the dissipation, which is low anyway, is spread across them, but also it means that the voltage across them is lower than it would be if it was just one. There is the bridge rectifier, which converts that alternating... Well, this allows that pulse current through in the positive wave and then the negative wave, so that uh, rectifies it and charges this capacitor. Unfortunately, that is a 47 megfarad 63 volt capacitor being used at 73 volts. Quite a high voltage, it's above its rating, but... but it works. I think a 100 volt capacitor would have been a better option for there. Or if they wanted to allow for everything going wrong and everything going open circuit, they could have used a, a, 400, a 400 volt capacitor. When uh, the LEDs go open circuit in lamps like this, and I don't think these ones will really suffer much because they're being run at low current. When that happens, the voltage flies across that capacitor right up to pretty much peak mains voltage. And, uh, but it's current limited, so even if it is an underrated capacitor, although it will vent and puff up and pop, it won't necessarily do, it won't just go bang. That's the, the main thing there. So that capacitor has its own little 220k discharge resistor. Then there's two 100 ohm resistors with two connectors going out to the LED strips. And each LED strip has 23 LEDs with a voltage across them of 71.4 volts. And the current, because I measured the voltage across the resistors at 1.2 volts, the current is 12 milliamps. Now, if I bring in the kink calculator, we can work out the voltage across each LED. So 71.4 volts. Uh, divided by the number of LEDs is roughly 3.1 volts per LED, but that is only at 12 milliamps. It would be a bit higher if the uh, current was higher. 12 milliamps is quite conservative for this. The LED strip itself has a connector at one end and it's got a bus bar system going right past so that it can actually bridge onto other ones. It's pretty much a standard LED strip that you might find in some of the uh, strip lights. But uh, the LEDs themselves are all just in series. You may see that in the back here. You've got these big bridging links, and there's the positive and negative going the full length. And uh, one end is connected to one of those rails. Then it runs through all those LEDs, and then it connects to the other rail, and uh, they can just extend that on if they want. But in this case, they have just basically used uh, two in parallel with their own resistor each to cut, sort of allow for any slight voltage difference to even the current through them all. It's very straightforward. Um, if anything, I'm surprised that they uh, they rated these at about 2 watts per strip, but they ended up running it at 1 watt. So it's going to last a very long time. If anything, for the given you've got sharp points of light here that I thought would attract the insects better, I wonder if it would have been better if they'd used clear covers instead of this diffuse one that just creates a softer glow and might have less reach than uh, the directly viewed LEDs. But maybe they were just going for the fact they're pretending this is a, basically a, using fluorescent tubes just like the traditional ones. The sticky mat itself, I don't know if you can get spares or not for that particular model. Is it sticky? Let's touch it. Yes, it is. It's sticky. Uh, but you could improvise yourself. I'm sure you could get other sort of A4 sheets of this stuff and just lay strips in if you wanted. But there we have it. The strangely urinal shaped... Um, Low power, ultraviolet attracting sticky insect trap. It's not bad. It's quite a nice construction, a nice circuitry, and just kind of slightly underwhelming. And the spears don't seem to be readily available. But other than that, pretty neat.